Caleb just finished up his junior year of Bible college, and so he has one more year going into his senior year, and excited for what God has for this young man. And so, church, let's encourage him. So let's encourage him by listening well. Let's, rec- let's encourage him throughout the preaching. It'd be good to say amen every once in a while. <laughs> I'm just telling you, it, it really is encouraging. And, and so, uh, Brother Caleb, why don't you come preach for us, sir? Uh, pastor for giving me this opportunity to open up the word of God and to preach. I do not take it lightly. Uh, as you guys know, my name is Caleb Turcott. I am going into my senior year at Heartland Baptist Bible College. And I just thought I'd uh, just say this. You guys have an amazing pastor. Uh, Brother Richard was my youth pastor in New Mexico for what we like to say 10 minutes. Because it, it really felt like 10 minutes. Uh, I ended up in the youth group and... Um, I ended up moving to Pennsylvania right as they were leaving. So, uh, but I just want to thank Brother Richard. Uh, he's probably one of the main reasons I'm at Heartland Baptist Bible College right now. He invested in my life and he really pushed uh, my mom to let us go to, uh, what was it, youth con? Youth conference. And uh, that really just got me rolling into ministry and having that ministry mindset and wanting to serve God. So if you'd uh, please stand and turn in your Bibles to chapter, or Psalm chapter 91. Psalm chapter 91. We're going to read all 16 verses. Now, that might seem like a lot, but if you guys listen fast, I'll speak fast, and we can get right into the message. Psalm chapter 91. The Bible says, He that dwelleth in the, in the, mo- in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will save the Lord. He is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by noonday, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eye shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling, for he, shall give us, or, for he shall give his angel charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord God, I just want to thank you for this opportunity, this opportunity to open up uh, just your word and just to uh, share with your people what you have laid upon my heart, Lord God. And I just pray that, Lord, you would just use me as a vessel, Lord, that uh, you will just remove me uh, from this message and that you would just uh, shine forth and your people would just be uh, spiritually fed tonight, Lord God. And I just pray that uh, everything that is said and done tonight will just honor and glorify you, God. We love you, and we thank you for everything you do. In your sons, let me pray. Amen. You guys may be seated. Now, I want you guys to imagine this with me tonight. You're, it's either here in the United States or you're in another country, and the war had just broke out. Now, this war is devastating. This war, there's economic collapse. There's uh, the fears of the unknown. There's worries of uh, living. There's no hope. There's no peace, and you're trying to find a way just to survive. And you're looking for the answer, and you're looking for a place to stay, a place of defense, a place of refuge. And you look and look and look, and you finally uh, come across this guy in the middle of the road, and he goes, hey, so there's this army, this powerful army, this army of the Most High that just set up camp just down the road. And you're like, well, I just met this guy. Should I trust him? Should I not? And you, and you do decide to trust them. So you walk a couple miles down the road, and there it is, the place of refuge, the place of safety, a place where you can be sheltered and defended, 
a place where uh, you are taken care of and out of harm's way. Now, this story is kind of similar to what we're uh, going to be seeing here in Psalm 1, or Psalm 91. The psalmist was able to find security in God because God is the Most High God. The psalmist was able to find security in God because God is the Most High God. Now, before we jump into this psalm, uh, we're going to make some quick background work just to help us better understand this psalm a little bit more. Uh, this psalm has an anonymous author, uh, but some speculate that this psalm was actually written by Moses. Uh, psalm 90, the uh, previous chapter, is the oldest psalm in the psalms. And Warren Wiersbe says this about Psalms 90. It deals with these that began with the fall of our first parents and will continue to be important and puzzling until the return of our Savior. Psalm 90 acknowledges the uh, eternity of God and the frailty of man, the sinfulness of man, and the shortness of life, and prays in a, Moses prays for God's grace on his people. Now, Moses had uh, more than likely written uh, Psalm 90 and probably Psalm 91 during the wilderness wanderings. Uh, Psalm 90 can be broken down into the two main thought units, the transitory nature of human life, which is the non-permanent nature of human life, which is this, God outlasts man, and God creates the same man and sees the same man turned into the dust of the earth. Then the compassionate nature of divine love. Moses asked God to have compassion on his sinful people. Moses wanted God to, have, uh, to balance judgment for the sin of his people with the graciousness that he promised to them. Though sin has consequences, and we all know that is uh, death, God still extends his love to humankind. God extends his mercy to humankind in Psalm 90. Now let's see what the psalmist is uh, trying to tell or convey to us here in Psalm 91. And if you're taking notes tonight, uh, the first point is faith in God. Faith in God, verses 1 through 4. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Now we see here in verse 1 that God is the psalmist security. The psalmist described God as Most High, or Elion, which means sovereign ruler. Our God, he is the God that is greater than all the other kings of this world. He is greater than all the false gods of this world. Our God is the sovereign ruler. He also described God as this, almighty, or Shaddai, which means sufficient. Aren't you glad that we serve a sufficient God tonight? Uh, look at the end of verse uh, number one with me. Uh, I'll just, I'm just going to read the entire thing again. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. This shadow that is being talked about here is the place that us as Christians in our daily lives should be uh, going to for shelter. Warren Wiersbe says this, the safest place in the world is a shadow if it is the shadow of the Almighty. Yeah. Look down at verse number two with me. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. The psalmist says, I will say of the Lord, He's going to testify to the Lord. He's going to tell other people about uh, his God and how his God is his uh, refuge and his fortress. My God, in him will I trust. Now, some simple definitions here tonight. Refuge means this, a shelter. And the word fortress is defined as this, a strong place and a place of defense. Aren't you glad that our God can be our strong place and our refuge? The word Lord here in verse 2 means Jehovah the covenant-making God, who is faithful to his promises. And God, Elohim, the powerful God, whose greatness and glory surpasses anything that we can imagine. The psalmist recognizes that the Lord is his safe place and his place of defense. He recognizes that God, Elohim, is powerful enough to, make, uh, to be his refuge and fortress. God will provide security to those who trust him as most high. Now, I can imagine most of us in this room, when we were either younger or still the age that we are, uh, whenever we had something chasing us or when we had something that went bump in the night, we went to dad. Dads, dads are great. Uh, bless God for dads. But whenever we 
had something coming after us or we heard some bump in the night, we'd go to him because we trust him as our safe place. Our fathers wouldn't just let us get attacked by a chihuahua or a, a, a black bear. Or I, I don't know what's in this uh, region of Colorado, but you never know. I mean, ch chihuahuas, those are they're just something else. But our, our father wouldn't just let us be attacked by anything. He would protect us. And we ran to our father for a place of security and shelter. And just how we can tr uh, run to our earthly fathers, we can run to our heavenly father in a time of distress. We can trust God when the trials of life are coming uh, to us and the temptations of life are trying to get to us. God will keep us safe and God will defend us from anything that is trying to attack us. Look here in verse number three with me. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Uh, verse three is where the psalmist now gives us some illustrations of what God or of how God will deliver us. From the snare of the fowler, he will deliver us from the trap of the hunter. Fowler is a term that people use who uh, trap and hunt birds. Now, I personally have not ever went trapping uh, for, uh, for birds or hunting for birds, but it'd be something that I'd really love to do. Look down, God will deliver us from the noise and pestilence. Noise and pestilence is a deadly and hateful trouble and distress. God will deliver, deliver us from those who are seeking to trap us and hinder our Christian lives. He will deliver us from the temptations of sin that wrecks our daily lives. He'll deliver us from Satan who's trying to get to us each and every day. You know, as soon as we get saved, we have a big target on our back as Christians. And uh, Satan's trying to try to do anything that he can in his power to get to us. But as long as we're running to God as our refuge, nothing will get to us. Look down at verse number four with me. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Verse four tells us about how God will protect us in this life. He will cover us with his feathers. Uh, I, used, I like to think of baby chicks when they're, when they're born and they're, uh, the mother hen is uh, hiding them under, their, or under her wings. Uh, we will trust him while under his wings. And personally, when I was doing my study here and diving deep into it, I believe that the wings uh, that are being talked about here are the wings of the cherubims. Now, the cherubims uh, cover the ark uh, of the covenant and protected it in uh, 1 Kings chapter uh, 8, verse 7. For the cherubim spread forth their two wings over the place of the ark, and the cherubim cover the ark and the staves therefore above. Now the cherubims, if you guys haven't seen a picture of it, there'd be two of them on either side of the ark, and they would literally just have their, I mean, just, just imagine I have feathers, even though I don't, I don't have feathers. They would just cover the, uh, the ark of the covenant and protect it. And that is what I, uh, I believe that the Bible is trying to say here. And we see here in the Old Testament that every time the cherubim is mentioned, that he is covering something with his wings. Then the last part of that, verse 4, His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Amen. We have the complete word of God. Un or infallible, preserved, perfect word of God. And I just want to take a uh, moment here tonight and just say this. If we're not living in his word, if we're not memorizing this word and putting it on our hearts and in our minds daily, if we're not spending our daily time with God, we will fall and we will fail in this, daily, in this life. Now, the, the word buckler is a shield that protects a person from all side. And like I just stated, God's truth, God's word will protect us in all sides of life. If you're uh, still jotting down notes, first, uh, point number two is peace from God. Peace from God, verses 5 through 13. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. Now, verse 5 and 6 talk about how we should not fear the dangers that happen in this world. The terror by night. You should not be afraid of what's in the dark or the dark, or whatever is lurking in the dark. And we shouldn't fear the arrow that flieth uh, at day. Us as believers can have peace and not fear the attacks of uh, this world at any time. Do not fear the pestilence that walketh in darkness. 
Simply meaning this, do not fear the fatal diseases that are moving about the world. 2020, COVID, we all kind of feared, if not fully feared. Uh, up in Pennsylvania, the western part of Pennsylvania, we're, we're a bunch of rednecks and hillbillies. So none of us really cared about COVID. We still just went on with our daily lives. And uh, we, we just really didn't fear. But I know uh, some parts of the state uh, where it's more conservative, they, they feared. They feared some, some silly disease that made us be six feet apart, that couldn't bite us at six feet apart, that made us wear these silly masks. I, I don't know. It was, it was kind of silly. But we should not fear the, the diseases that are uh, roaming about this world. We should not fear the destruction that is wasted that noonday. And I study this out, and it just simply means the burning rays of the sun. Now, I will admit, I'm a guy with a couple of huge fears slash weakness or weaknesses. Heights? No, thank you. I, I cannot, like, th this is probably as high as I can go without my knees trembling. And then needles? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Needles are terrible. I remember being five years old in the, in the doctor's office. It took my mom, my dad, two nurses, and another doctor just to hold me down and give me a tiny shot. Needles are terrible. Now, I fear them with a passion, and I, and I believe that everyone in here has their own separate fears, whether that is uh, economics or e e economic collapse, say that word five times fast, or drowning, or being alone, or the unknown, or the dark. And the list can go on and on. But we should not fear any of those things because we have and we serve the Most High God who protects us and loves us and shelters us from everything. The Lord God Almighty watches over us and protects us and protects those who dwell in Him. Now that's uh, what God is trying to tell us here in verses 5 and 6. But looks, uh, let's look down on verses 7 and 8 and see what He is trying to convey to us here. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Now verses uh, 7 and 8 deal with those who do not place their trust in the Most High God. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand. Those who fall by our side are those who did not and do not trust the Lord as Savior, the Lord as Most High. And we can parallel these two verses back to the covenant promises that God had made to Israel. Israel saw grief of the Egyptians whenever the Egyptians' firstborns died during the Passover. And Israel saw the griefs of the Egyptians when they were swallowed up by the Red Sea. We see that Israel trusted in God, and no harm was done to them. But then we also see what happened to the Egyptians, those who did not trust God and, put, and have him as uh, their security as their most high. Verse number eight. No, but it shall come, or, but it shall not come nigh thee. At the end of verse seven, those who trust in God will not experience the death and pain that those who do not trust God do. We will only see the reward of the wicked, and that is death. Death to the lack of trust in our in the Most High God. Now that death, we all know, is, yes, physical death, but then also spiritual death. Eternal separation from our uh, Creator, our Almighty God. Trusting in God as our Most High is the greatest thing that we can do. And verses 9 and 10 go right along with that. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee, Neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Verse 9 and 10 have this, because you did this, in return, you get this feeling to it. And I believe that verse 9 and 10 could be conjoined as one, but we know that God preserved his word the way he did for a reason, and it is not an error. Because the psalmist made the Lord his refuge and his safe place, the most high, his habitation, the place where he dwells, no evil will uh, befall upon him. No plague will corrupt him. He chose to make God his dwelling place, a place where nothing will ever get to him. Now, I think it's fair to say, um, whenever we hear those tornado sirens go off and we're having our phones blow up with the notification that a tornado's coming, that we go to a, a tornado shelter. 
It's just, it's just a no-brainer. And every time I just think about tornadoes, this was before Brother Richard was in New Mexico. I think it was, oh, 2006. We just moved there, and I think it was like one of the first weeks that we were there. We just had a tornado ripping down our street. And my mom threw my brother and I in the bathtub and put a mattress over us, and she was on top of the mattress trying to keep us safe. And we're like, where's dad, where's dad? And my dad, if, if you ever knew him, bless his heart, he's just sitting out on the porch. Man, it's a nice tornado. I wonder if it's gonna come here. And you just hear the winds just going and things being thrown around. And he, he's just out there doing, doing dad things, I guess. <laughs> but we, we purposely have a tornado shelter to get into the tornado shelter, or in our case, a bathtub with a mattress on us. We don't just sit around like my dad and just watch a tornado rip down the street. No, we purposely have that shelter to protect us. Because you made the investment in getting the shelter or building the shelter, you can be protected during the storm. Because we have Christians chose God as our dwelling place, we are safe from evil and the horrible things of sin. It, it would be absolutely absurd to have the almighty, all-sufficient, all-loving God in our presence and at our, I don't want to use the word disposal, but in our lives and not run to him for refuge and protection. It's just, it's just absurd. We need to run to our God when trials are pressing down on us and we we're in danger of, of temptations. Verse 11 and 12. For he shall give us angels, or for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their, in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. God gives us protection to keep us safe. He gives us his angels. God commissions his angels to watch over us and to, and to protect us, the ones who trust God as most high. God does not give each person their own protective angel, though, but he does guarantee ange angelic protection when needed. And we see in verse number 12 that Satan quoted part of this verse while tempting Jesus in the wilderness, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Uh, found in Matthew uh, 4, 6. And the Lord responded with Deuteronomy 6, 16, and to make a long story short, if God commanded Jesus to jump off the pinnacle of the temple, the angels would have cared for him, and the angels wouldn't have just let him fall straight down. And, he, and the angels would have protected him. We know that wasn't the case, because if Jesus would have jumped, it would have been uh, of presumption and not of faith, and would have tempted God. I just want to make this quick little point God does commission his angels towards us, and uh, he does commission them to protect us, but that doesn't mean that we should go out and try to be willy-nilly and push that protection to the point of tempting God. Amen. Look down in verse 13 with me, if you would. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Verse 13 closes out our second uh, thought unit by saying, Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder. The young lion and the adder, or in the dragon, shalt thou trample under thy feet. And the word adder here means a snake or a cobra. And the word lion here is a lion. It's, I mean, it's pr pretty self-explanatory. And if you don't know what a lion is, we can all just take a, a church field trip to the Denver Zoo, and we can all just see what a lion is. The word lion and adder here in the, uh, this context refers to Satan. He tells us that Satan shall be trampled under our feet. God will, God will take care of uh, his people and will make his people trample Satan under feet. Point number three, which is uh, verses 14 through 16, we see love for God. Love for God. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I del deliver him. I will set him on high because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Now, before we uh, dive into uh, those certain verses, I want us to take notice of an important shift of who's really talking here 
in uh, verses 14 through 16. Because it goes from the psalmist, from verses 1 to 13, talking about God and what God is doing, to uh, God talking and what he is going to be doing for the psalmist in verses 14 through 16. God is speaking here and says, Because the psalmist set his love upon me, and then I, also being God, will deliver him. Because the psalmist cleaved to God, clung to him, trusted him, he will deliver him and put him on high. He will lift him up and he will exalt him. He will be there when the psalmist calls his name. He will protect him, he will deliver him, and he will honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Warren Wearsby said this, To the Jewish people, living a long life and seeing one's children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren was the ultimate blessing in life. Like Abraham, they wanted to die in a good old age and full of years, meaning a fulfilled life. God is going to add years of life to those who trust him as most high God. He will satisfy them with long life and show him his salvation. This psalm is a powerful psalm, and I believe just like the rest of the Bible, we can make some application in our daily lives today. Just like the psalmist, we as Christians living in the 21st century can and should trust God as our most high God. God is the one that we should run to in times of trouble. It shouldn't be Facebook, it shouldn't be TikTok, it shouldn't be uh, YouTube or Instagram or anything that we can think of and anything that man is trying to have the solutions for. No, we should be running to the God who is most high, the God who is our shelter and the God that can defend us. When you're in the workplace and you're having a bad day, you just have terrible thoughts coming into your mind, co-workers getting on to you, trust me, I worked in a lumber yard. I have had some pretty annoying co-workers. But any time that I would get overwhelmed or annoyed, I would just run to God, because God is always there. Amen. And you, you guys should do the same thing. Run to God. God will protect you, and God will help you in your time of need. When you're living this life, and the workload is just too much, and you're either struggling financially, or you're struggling, or struggling spiritually, or emotionally, or even physically, run to God. He is the Most High God. He is the one who promises protection. He's the one that can secure you. He's the one that can protect you. He can, or He's the one that can uh, satisfy us. Don't run to the things of the world. If you trust the world as a form of security, you're going to fall, and you're going to fail, and you will not survive. God will provide security if you need, uh, if you simply trust in him. And we have have the answers to life right here. All the answers of life are in this book. And like I said before, we need to be abiding in this book constantly. God will provide security if you just simply trust in him. And just like the person at the beginning of uh, the message that was looking for security and ultimately found it, we can also play or find a place of security in the Most High God. And God is wanting us to trust him as, uh, as our security. And it's ultimately your choice if you're going to make God your Most High God in your place of security. And I urge you today, there's no other place like God or like the security that God can give you. As Christians, we try to find security in the things of this world, but we should find security in the God who is most high. And ultimately, the choice is yours tonight. God will provide security to those who trust him as most high God. Now, I know this is the Sunday night crowd, but there can be someone here that is not saved tonight or is struggling with salvation. Run to God. God's the most high God. God loved us so much that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to live a holy sin or sinless life and to die on the cross and to raise again three days later for you and for me. And that's, that's just my, that's my heart tonight, church. We can have, or we have the most high God as our God. Run to him in time of need. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord God, I just want to thank you for the opportunity to open up your word and just to preach your word, Lord. Lord, this passage has just been a blessing to me and and just study, and I just pray that uh, it can be a blessing and a help to those who really needed it tonight, Lord God. And Lord, I just 
I just want to thank you for just being our most high God and our place of security, our place of refuge, and our place of defense. And Lord God, if there's someone here tonight that is uh, struggling about salvation and do not know you as personal Savior, Lord, I just pray that you would just uh, have your hand in their lives and work a mighty work in them. Lord God, I just pray that you would just be uh, with the remainder of this night. Lord, I love you and I thank you for everything you do. In sins of my pray. Amen. If you don't